Hey, I know I asked Ryan, I was like, yo, how did y'all dig me up out of this damn Bro, you dope as hell, yeah. man. Speaking of which, welcome back to the 85 South Show Black <laughs> Influence Spotlight. Bro, we always got some dope people stopping through the trap, you know, showing us love. And today is no exception. We got a dope ass creative. We can't even say an artist, because he, it goes way beyond that. A dope ass creative human being, bro. I'm sitting here going through the bio like, Bro, DL done did it all, bro. And you got a cold ass name, DL Warfield. You like that? Bro, only Warfield. I'm familiar with his Marsh. Come on, man. Marsh, uh, Marshall Warfield. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I haven't met a Warfield that I wasn't related to. So, For real? You know, and it's yeah. a good, it was a wide receiver that was Paul really good. Warfield. There you yeah, go. So See, I know I'm related to him. You yeah. know him? And my son is a wide receiver. Actually. What's up, yeah. uh, other Warfield? <laughs> <laughs> DLL Warfield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw extra L in there, man. Yeah. So welcome to the trap, first and foremost, man. Man, I, I'm uh, excited to be down here, you know, and I was definitely familiar with your show, like I followed on social media, but I knew uh, it was something that was super dope when I told my son and his eyes lit up. You yeah. Know? So I was like, oh, okay, so this is really the shit, you know? But uh, no, I appreciate it. I'm glad to uh, be down here. Chop Brother, up speak to what you said about your son. Bro, when his generation started embracing the show from Bro. us as a, like, not as like, you know, they doing it, but right. when it came some cool shit to them, I right. knew it was going, this is going to be something that lasts for a minute. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't even start coming to comedy shows yet. Right. Like his generation. Right, so right, right. These are some fans. So shout out to, to the money you're going to spend with us in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Young stick. Yeah, that's, yeah. My, that's my investment. Yeah. Right <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's funny. I got to give you this because as soon as I told him, he was like, you know, they're going to roast you on the show. No. So I was like, oh, shit. So I brought down a little peace offering. Okay. So one of my, uh, <laughs> one of my dope tees, you know what I mean? That's dope. I was like, yeah. It's like maybe he will uh, lay off me a little bit. I'll let you make it. You brought me some. <laughs> you, when you bring gifts, yeah. <laughs> you get to make it. Taylor, you mind adding this to the rack of things? You know I like to have ambiance. I'm going to hang it up right, as we do work. this, you know. What Taylor is. I be getting on her nerves. I can see it all in her face. <laughs> she be like, right. bro, she, I do not work for you. Yeah. She came in smiling, though, but I guess you, you might have changed the attitude a little bit for her. She, I don't talk to her that much because she's fucking me up. She real quiet. I'm like, why you don't ever say nothing? She said, why you don't ever say nothing to me? <laughs> Makes sense. I just walked off because yeah, I was yeah, like, you right. Yeah, you right. Yeah. yeah. But Makes man, sense. How, did you get, how did you get your start with, you know, bringing the creativity to life, the visuals, the art, the, all of that, man? Man, uh, one. Give me your first. Give me your first successful project. I don't give a damn if it was like first. second grade and you drew the dopest you know, okay. Ninja Turtle or something. My some first shit, successful man. project, man, when I was in middle school, I won a, a logo design contest for American Can Company. American Can? Can Company. I don't even think they're in existence anymore, but they were based in St. Louis. My godfather worked for them, and he was like, hey, we having a, we having a, a, a logo design contest. Can you draw something? And I was like, sure. And so the, the slogan was, let's put management and workers on an even scale or something like that. So I did what you would think. I drew a scale. you like know, a with just, scale. Yeah, like a Libra scale with, you know, some management shit on one side and then some worker stuff on the other. And I won, the, I won it. So it was like $500. You know, they, it would, they probably should have paid me about a grand but at least. But tell the truth, though, for you to be in middle school, that was a oh, lick. It was, it was a big thing. It was definitely a big thing, you know, and so... Uh, all of my successes, you know, I attribute to uh, little marks like that. Like, yeah. it wasn't really anything big, but it was a couple things. It was one, uh, uh, people opening up doors and opportunities for me. You know, that definitely happened. Uh, and I'm, I'm so thankful for all of the people that did, you know, that did it from art, sports, mentoring, teachers, et cetera. Like, I had a lot of people that carved out lanes for me. Right. And uh, my godfather is one of those people that, recognized my talent at a young age and brought something to me that probably most people wouldn't have 
thought to do for a seventh or eighth grader. Right. Now, and I saw you checking out some of the fan art. Right, we always, you know, we rotated, but right. it ain't been rotated in a while. Yeah, man. It's, you, it's, know, you got every, some nice pieces. Bro, every show we go to, somebody bring us some artwork. Like, and you, and it's always people you never would expect to be artists. It'd be right. like a hood ass dope dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like a dope boy. Like when you draw that, man, I was doing, I started back doing portraits in the pen. And, right, right, right. And I, I did put through a little something to get, can we get a picture? Absolutely. I don't know why they always got that boy. But can we, me and my lady, we get a picture? <laughs> right. No, y'all can have that. We just, can we get a picture? You know what? Like artists, man, we come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. So I think it's dope that, uh, you know, former dope boys are now getting back into their portrait bag. You know, that's awesome. This show been bringing the hood back together. Bro. That's good. That's good. You know what? I think that's a great title too, bringing the hood back together. So maybe that's another segment or a spinoff. Just bringing the hood back together. Absolutely. Then we just had like a baby daddy and a baby mama <laughs> on FaceTime, <laughs> mediate arguments. Or right. Something. So he can that's come get the kids on Wednesday. Right. <laughs> but I, a lot of people hit me on the on the inbox. They didn't got back together with their baby mama and stuff. Hey, I'm man, not that's saying awesome, that it's all our fault. But right. We had something to do with it. But you know what? You could, you know, you could fix a lot of things through laughter. You know, and yeah. uh, like, m like me and my wife, we've been together since 1985. Right? You never even tried to get no more. Right, 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 right. His I mama, his mama. Right. Hey, but listen. Y'all grew up together. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Since um, since I was a sophomore in high school, man. But when people ask what the secret is, I was like, yo, because we can still laugh together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so everything else can go up and down, but. You know, like if you really enjoy being around that person. Yeah. You know? man, so you comedy, got... comedy can cure all kind of shit, man. We were about to talk about some art, but bro, you you've been with your wife for like thirty something years. Yeah. Man. How, give... how old are you? I'm thirty eight. Okay. Now you got to give us some some game on that, bro, because as black men, we don't get a lot of black men that can give us some successful marriage tips or you, you know what, right man? woman I tips. Think, uh... like, this is a whole nother thing we got to discuss. You're yeah, not so... leaving us. Okay. Hanging like okay, that. Okay, okay. So listen, so I think that one, I mean, when it gets down to giving relationship advice, like the only uh the only person that you have to worry about your relationship working with is you and that other person. So right. like my advice for you might not work, but it works for me and my wife. I ain't and gonna take it anyway. Yeah. I ain't listening. <laughs> fuck it. Leave me. I'm yeah. fucking up. But you know, yeah. but it, yeah. Fuck it. You going she going through it with me first. <laughs> not, we're not just about to be all in love. Hell hey, no. you know what? Hey. I need to know if you here for real. <laughs> I'm so, drag your ass. <laughs> yeah, so you want somebody that's battle tested, so that's dope. And so I think, you know. My wife is definitely battle tested. I mean, being with an artist, you know, is no easy task. Yeah, because people are weird. Absolutely. You creative people are very weird. Absolutely. And I, I would say that, you know, I'm definitely weird. I just like different shit and I think differently. Yeah. You know, but I think uh, one thing that probably makes me a little different than a lot of artists is I was also an athlete. Oh, so okay. I was like Stun football and track Stun and art. Yeah, that so. was your way of letting them know you wasn't on no nerd shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. All this shit. yeah. <laughs> but you know, it just it just made it. I think it brought uh, I think it brought me down a little bit because when you play sports you and balance. when you have to do things like that, yeah, it gives you balance. And and to me, everything was about working my ass off. Right. And so sometimes I work my ass off and I win. Sometimes I work my ass off and I lose, but I just try to stay neutral about the whole situation. Yeah, go. I kind of approach art the same way. Yeah. Just it's about working my ass off. So. So creatively, what are some of your your favorite pieces or things to create? You know what? Because uh, I see I like doing in, everything, man. You've been in I mean, the fashion. Yeah. I, I like I like doing Nudity everything. <laughs> he said. Punk. You said nudity? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Chicago that, Tribune. Yeah. And Heiser Bush. You yeah. got a diverse. Yeah. This ain't all of them. I'm just right. running off a few of them. I'm I think say like something. some of the some of the most exciting projects, you know, that your audience probably knows is like the stuff that I did when I was a creator director at LaFace. Right. And so there I was in charge of like Outcast, TLC, Pink, Goody Mob, TI. Tony Braxton, and what was incredible was seeing like those artists at the Genesis, like when they bring you what they think is, what they know is the best shit that they got, and then they trust you to, to uh, add a visual to it. Like that's an incredible, that's a credible hand. Or you just named a whole list of musical titans. Right. 
like working with them early before the world, like you said, before the world gets to consume all of this great shit they about to drop. Mm -hmm. It's like, could you see the, the, the superstardom in some of these people like off the gate? Absolutely. Right? You know, like it was just, it was different moments working there where like they would bring in the music and as soon as you hear it, you would be like, holy shit, you know? And uh, at the time, you know, we were just thinking about what was great at that moment, not like what was going to be great 10, 20 years right. down the road. And so, like, when I look at some of those artists, just, you know, and, uh, and what they have went on to be, become, like, I'm not surprised because they were great then, you know, right. but you don't think about the, the long term when you're working on that shit. Yeah. You're thinking about being the greatest right and now. And then you gotta, you gotta, you can't even really talk about it. You gotta wait before, you know, it's Absolutely. dropped. Absolutely. Man, what was, I mean, people never really get the grand scope of how great and huge TLC Right. is and was like right. what was it like working with TLC man working with TLC was great because they uh they just love creative shit and you couldn't go too far for them mm -hmm. you know you could bring them any idea and they were open to it and so I think that uh to me that was one of the qualities that really really made them stand out like they were a hundred percent about going against the grain visually musically and everything and that's the type of person that I am too so it was perfect, and so uh, they were easy. I mean, they were one of the easiest groups that I actually had to work, got to work with. Who was the artist that pushed your creativity? Like, that really pushed you, like, I don't know if I can be able to fuck with him. This, I would this probably shit. say Usher. Really? You know, absolutely, <laughs> Usher, man. I mean, and it's funny, it's like, he, uh, he's definitely a, uh, a rethinker, you know what I mean? Like, he's not super impulsive. And we've had multiple situations where, last like, I've changes. designed, you know what? The la it wouldn't be the last minute changes as much as it was to get to the finish. So an example, like, uh, when I did the artwork for Here I Stand, I probably did 60 covers. Damn. He went with the first one that I sent him after I, you know, after I did all of those. And so the way that we worked, as soon as I designed it, I sent it to him. I was like, dude, this is it. And he's like, man, I don't know. And so design after design after the design and we ended up going back to the very first one yeah you know and so i don't know if he was just fucking with me at times but he he was the one that is challenging to get him to commit to something so you create these one-off pieces what happens to the other 59 man they get ready to become nfts mm. <laughs> yeah well, that would be a goal you know what i mean but they just sit in the vault and you know like with most of the uh, music projects that i have i mean i have just files of shit, you know, from photo shoots to like whatever. So I have all of that, you know. Right. And so uh, now I'm just trying to navigate through ownership and who owns what and can I release some of this material, you yeah. know, because I have my fine art, which is like mostly my main focus right now that I could definitely do. But if I can dig back in the bag and grab some of that stuff that's, you know, people never even seen that right. I thought was amazing, you know. Okay. Uh, that would be a, an incredible opportunity. Do me a favor, because you know so much about it. Like, like you said, we got a very big, broad audience from your son age to grandma and them age. Right. What are, who are some of the black artists that they should look up, get online, and check out? Like, black fine get, artists? Yeah, give us some dope black artists to uh, go catch man, up on. man, uh, Kevin Wack, Fabian Williams, which is occasional superstar, Paper Frank, uh, Gary Kelly, Thomas Blackshear. Throw some women in there. Throw some women in there. Give us some black women, artists, creatives, uh, sculptures, man, whoever do sculptures, whatever. We want everything. Man, female artists. I mean, I'm just, I'm just drawing a blank now. But uh, we'll get back to it. Yeah, you we, can just yell them out it. as yeah, they yeah, come yeah. to you. Yeah, just random, remember. like I got Tourette's. This is the trap. <laughs> we, have, we have no format. Yeah. Tasha, yeah. Uh, Tasha Black. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She called. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a black man show, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Like the uh, a lot of the artists that I followed and was inspired, inspired by growing up, they were they were not like your most well-known fine artist. You know, yeah. they were like people that I interned for, yeah. you know, and things like that. We'll so, check them out too. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I gave you a couple like Tony Wade, Mark Scott Carroll, Gary Kelly, like those are guys that really uh, revolutionized me, things for me as an artist. That's dope, man. So any of your kids get into the art? You know what, my daughter is a writer-director. 
you know, she just finished working on Spider-Man. She's super funny as shit, you know, but uh, she's working at production, but write and direct it. And my son is, he, he has my athletic side. He has some uh, creative ability, but, you know, I, try, I have to try to pull it out of him. You yeah, know what I mean? So, I understand. Yeah. That. What about you got kids? Yeah. Okay. Are the, any of them funny? Well, my son is so sarcastically funny. Yeah. It, it is so crazy. Yeah, that's dope. How old is he? 12. Okay. And it, it's just, it's to the point where I don't even want to talk to him. <laughs> because he's fully aware that I'm a comedian. So, like you said, it's like, I think he think he has the right to be a comedian. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm your daddy. Right. <laughs> so y'all go back and forth? A lot. Yeah. But he be that's right good. a lot of times. Yeah, right. that's good. I think uh, having those type of dialogues, I mean, I think to me, creativity is right next to sarcasm. Right. And it's right, you know, it's right next to being a smart ass. And so like in school, I was always drawn to smart ass, wise ass type My son people. definitely yeah. is smart yeah. ass. Like I always, like he always go to my dad's house, right? Mm. You know, my dad old school Mississippi. Okay. So <laughs> every time my son, like get ready to get up, get a snack or something, my dad hit him with some old shit that this generation of kids ain't never used to hear. So he'll be like, yeah. grandson, there's some good cold water in there. So <laughs> now like every time my, my son come home, Anytime somebody walk past the refrigerator, they'd be like, it's some good cold water in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's some of the funniest shit. But that's dope though, man. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome to have th those type of bonds with your kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that- And just to watch them grow up. It's yeah. like they go to bed and wake up and be holding other individuals Absolutely. when they come downstairs. Yep, and then, I mean, he'll probably say shit to uh, pull great bits and things out for you. you oh know? yeah, the questions like, that they ask. Right. And some, some of my, uh, like as a fine artist, like some of my best, most memorable pieces have came through joking and talking shit. And so, yeah. like, uh, What like, are some of your favorite pieces that you've personally done? I don't uh, think we get what? to brag enough recently, as a culture. Yeah, recently um, I did a piece. It was, I, well, I do a body of work called the American Flag Remix. So if you look it up online, it's just one word, American Flag Remix. But uh, I did a piece in that series called The United States that we built this shit for free. Oh my and it God. Was, yeah, now and that's it, the shirt. Yes. That's the movie. Yeah. We can get Ava DuVernay yeah. on that. Yeah. <laughs> See it all. Hook it up. Bro. We're Hook get, it up. Uh, brother Umar going to have to do some yes. narrations in there. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Bro, can we write that? Let's do it. The United States that we, we built, built this, this shit for free. free. <laughs> yeah. We can get Dan Kalua in there. Yeah. He's very convincing. Yeah. I want Jada Pinkett to come back on this one. Yeah. I want Lawrence Fishburne to land the motherfucking never connect and just like all <laughs> all these generations of black people come from out of space and underground. That's man, that shit gonna be harder I, than I, Planet I, I'm of the Apes. I'm fucking with that heavy already. I yeah. think that's a great idea. Guess who else gonna be in it? Shaka Khan. Okay. Yeah. It, it, but you know what? Maybe she just sings the opening. You want her in it? I want her in it. I want okay. her to walk out and give a speech. Okay. Like she's standing on a cliff or a ledge and she's like, black people, <laughs> we are here. But she'll do it better. Maybe Grace Jones, too. Grace Jones. Ooh. Grace Jones. Ooh. Grace Jones. Yeah. Grace in the Jones movie, too. Grace Jones and Naomi Campbell are sisters. Okay. You see how I put that together? Is, is it a comedy or is it a, a uh -uh. drama? Uh-uh. Drama. Nah, it's more it's it's more like a Star Wars. It's like our Star Wars. Okay. I think that's it's dope. Like, it's gotta be like ten of them. Cause we ten behind <laughs> already. You know At least. Saying? Now yeah, we got a little bit of catching up to do. Right. But I think, yeah, like that piece, you know, it was inspired by enslaved American enslaved African Americans, transatlantic slave trade. And the original piece is hanging up in the gathering spot right now. But yeah. uh, like I wrapped this whole flag that I built, you know, which the front of it is a cross section of a slave ship. And I wrapped the entire flag in like this chain that looked like the shit was from like the 1700s, you know. And uh, it was like the most emotional, heaviest piece that I've done. But I think that one is uh, probably the run that I really put my all into it the most. Yeah. You know, I always, you know, I'm always into like whatever it is I'm working on at that moment. But that piece, like when people see it, it's beautiful, but it's haunting at the same time. Mm. And you know, I'm gonna ask, man, what was it like working with the? Dope ass outcast, man. Man, you know what? Working with those guys, because uh, them was niggas great, literally man. came from the future, right? And came back to right. do this shit, man. right? You know what, man? Like I remember, uh, like, ha just having conversations with them just about like their concept of space, you know. And I, I remember talking to Dre about when he really made the flip and started singing about 
like things that came to him in his dreams and things like that. And when you're in the moment and you're having those type of conversations, you don't really trip off of that shit. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, did you approve this logo? You know what I mean? But when, but when you sit back and you think and then you see like how, you know, they told you something a year, a year before they drop and how everything maps out, it's, a, it's, it's incredible. But like those guys are definitely geniuses, man. I mean, I look at them like they're this, gen, this era's version of like the Rolling Stones or some shit. Like they're bigger than hip hop. Like they, they've transcended. You Let know? me ask you this for the artists, like in the music game or, you know, whatever. How important is it to have that signature logo? You know, I think it's very important for one, uh, two reasons. One, I mean, you want to have something that somebody can recognize you instantly from, whether it's from a distance or whether it's from up close. You know, and then also just the just the longevity and legacy of merchandising. So you know, like it's it's a shitload of uh, bands, especially like on the rock side that sells so much merch. Rolling Stone. That yes, man, like that mouth right. and that tongue. I mean, Grateful then they Dead. license it. Absolutely. So it's it's a, and kiss. I mean, it's an important kiss. thing to yeah, think most about. Most definitely. It's a but when you think about uh, Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Yeah. I mean, shit. The Commodores had it. Yeah. But but when you think about like a lot of the big black bands and, and hip hop artists, like you can't name too many symbols. I, was, I mean, you, Outkast has theirs. Um, you know, Run DMC has theirs. But other than that, like I don't know who you could Public Enemy. Yeah. You know, so maybe it's them three, but I can't think of anybody that has that symbol that when you see it, it's like the Batman shit in the sky, you know? Yeah. And I think it's, it's very important. That's dope. Like man. your backwoods, yeah. you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. You know what? I'm a sucker for some advertising, bro. <laughs> this shit was so dope. I yeah. was like, I gotta have it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they I did got a good some job. good friends over there at Backwoods that's been. That's been making sure I stay with some fresh ass backwood shit to throw with the J's and that's great. Things yeah, that's that great. Nature. So and then it's shit out early. Ain't nobody got this yet. So, so how long did it take you to coordinate all of that? You just like <laughs> <laughs> you see well, it? it yeah, yeah, yeah. The red, yeah, shoe, and yeah. The red with the yellow too, and then yeah. the yellow and red. Oh my God. So did you lay out two different J's or did you like this have on the red? Come. Okay. This is oh, how okay. they come. Got yeah. it, got and it, I'm got just it. putting them up so they'll know that they knew. Got so it. So they can see <laughs> that the bottom is icy and shit like that. They, they are clean. I'm ass off on this show, man. They are clean. As you should. Yeah, it's yeah. man. Because if you look good, you get paid good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off. I just wanted to yeah. bump them back up and let them know we still in here with it. J.O.N., yeah. play me some pimping while we doing this, man. We got company in the house, man. Yeah. He gonna think we ain't creative enough. Now he was killing it earlier. When he said his name. Don't was... boost his head up, man. Okay, okay, okay. This nigga, okay, okay. This nigga named yeah. John, but he got us calling him J O N. Yeah, yeah. I was like, is I it? Yeah. Hate this dude, bro. And I was like, does this stamp or something? He was like, nah. He got that in middle school too. You got your nickname from middle school, right? Yeah. I think you rock with it. Like when 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 God has somebody give you a middle name, you keep, I mean nickname, you keep that shit. Bro, this know? dude is authentically one of the coolest motherfuckers you ever met. This nigga don't never get out of character. That's good. For real, I ain't That's never good. seen him yell, run. <laughs> I ain't never seen him in a hurry. I, <laughs> this motherfucker is on one speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Hey, so what are you working on? What's next? Like, what's, what's exciting coming up for you? What's exciting? Shit, it's all exciting because none of this shit was ever supposed to happen. So right. every show is exciting. Right now, the main thing that I'm doing since the world is so crazy and just to be extra safe is just I'm doing these tour dates with Mike Epps. Okay. So, you know, we're dropping five or six dates at a time. That's great. Just, you know, just yeah. taking it slow, you know. Yeah. Day by day, going yeah. back into this shit. Yeah. Creating this, we working on some animated shit, trying okay. to get the Roach Motel. We got this cartoon. Yeah, I, I was taking that tur that uh, T-shirt out. Yeah, man. Yeah. This from the we had did some dope shit on the show, and the fans wanted us to bring that. Okay. We had did a song called Everybody Had Roaches. And got it. So we did got one that's exterminators. Yeah. Uh, man, hey, so been... here's a funny one, man, for you. I mean, seeing just like connections. So a long time ago, man, like I designed. Nick Cannon's hip hop album cover. Right. Shit never came you out. You the dude we've been looking for, because you should have <laughs> told him. Nah, this is bullshit. Now, that shit never came out, though. I remember, uh, you know, like I ran into him at an event. It was like uh, Grammy week. 
And I was like, hey, man, I designed your cover. He's like, man, don't tell nobody about that shit. You, know, you, you don't want he nobody gonna, to know. see this. Yeah. Nah, yeah. that dude's so damn cool, man. Yeah. He's a cool one, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, though. It's a small-ass world. Yeah, man. Everything is connected. And so I think, uh, especially in Atlanta, I mean, right. you know, it's easy to run in and bump into, you know, a great opportunity. So that's why you got to keep your reputation tight. Let me ask you this. After working with all these people who are, you know, considered legends and, you know, titans in the mm -hmm. music industry, how do you pick now who you work with after having a resume like that? Man, it's, it's got to be, like, if I'm working on, like, a creative direction design type project, it has to be two things that are determine a factor. Uh, do I love the music and, they, and do they got a budget? Yeah. You know, because other than that, it's just like, I, I'm not really into it. But if I dig the music, then maybe your budget don't even have to be as yeah. like a normal budget, you know? Going back to the music, tell me about your Tommy Boy days. Oh man. I used to love that Tommy Boy logo with the that three was a niggas good, Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was, was a, a good logo. logo. Man, so Tommy Boy, I mean, that, uh, it got me and my wife to New York City. Uh, the job wasn't all that fucking hot. I mean, it was, I was like, the, I started that clothing line. It never line. is. It's just the shit you do. Yeah, yeah. I started that clothing line, but what was dope was being in New York City, and uh, ex especially like at that age, and uh, being able to freelance for everybody. So while I was up there, I mean, even though work was like kind of hectic, uh, I was freelancing for like Andre Harrell, Uptown Records. Puffy and Bad Boy, uh, shit, everybody that I can kind of get a meeting with, you yeah. know, and just the city, the, the energy of the city at that time, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that leaves a stamp on you. And so I came from St. Louis, which was slow moving like your boy, yeah. you know, and then I, uh, and then moved to New York City. So it was culture shock for me when I went up there. Yeah. And one of the funniest things that I heard was like, in the office, people said, you're not from here around you. And I was like, no, nah, how do you know? It's like, cause you always smile. And I'm like, damn, you know? Yeah, they don't like and so I was shit. like, nah, they didn't like you, they didn't like you to smile. At least, you know, in the in the early nineties, they didn't like you smiling in New York City, but- uh, They but don't they, really have a lot to smile about. Okay. This, is, this is true, but at the same time they do. Like I seen some of the craziest shit that I ever seen in my life in New York City. That you was will. just random. You, you will, know? and it'll be so normal to right. everybody. Right, and, it, and it'll be right next. Like, you can see the craziest shit right next to the most expensive, richest shit. I mean, literally, like, right next to yep. it, it don't matter. A homeless you know? dude taking a shit, eating a Dunkin' Donut. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Shit right yes. there, but he'll go and yeah. wash his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This dude's shitting! <laughs> yeah, what about it? <laughs> yeah, I seen that like one time at lunch. I just seen the dude pull his pants down. He was shitting on the side of a building. And exactly. I was like, and he was still talking yeah. to me. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> just another day at the office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's double back on something that you briefly spoke on these NFTs. Yeah. This shit is blowing up, man. Can you give us a, a better description of what that is? Man, I think um, of, the of NFT, is, yeah, I think. What it does is it gives artists and creators the opportunity to authenticate whatever it is that they own and they create, and then maybe get paid on it for longevity, right? Right. And so an NFT can be anything that people consider worth having ownership in and keeping. So like this conversation right here that we tape could be an NFT. Right. You know, you put it up and you, you uh, have it minted and you get your blockchain information and post it on the site and then you kind of up and rolling. But the shit is, is really, really crazy. And I think that it's gonna disrupt a lot of business markets, you know? Let me ask you this for the struggling artists who may be watching. Uh, what advice would you give to somebody who's super talented? Mm -hmm. That's, you know, having one of those, those you know, those moments that you right. have as an artist where things right. might not be moving. Right. Not to say that it's not good. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just one of those things that you go through creatively, right. trying so to get I, your feet. I think that like most artists, you know, like we really don't think like business, you know? And so you could be an artist and you always painting and you like, well shit, like my shit ain't selling, you know? And so I think, you know, if, if you have in that type of run, and, and you confident in your work, you might have to position that shit in another lane. Like maybe. Okay, let me yeah. ask you this. What, cause I got this friend that's a dope ass artist, but every time she finished a piece, she refused to sell it. What about, what advice would you give artists who are like that? They create all of this shit that they want nobody to have. 
Uh, well, it's a couple things. I mean, if she wants to create it and then maybe photograph and sell prints or sell t-shirts or coffee mugs, I mean, you no, could... she won't let nobody get it. It's just a uh, big ass personal collection. Shit, I mean, I was told like when I was in the eighth <clears throat> grade that if you're an artist, you gotta let the world know. You know. Now see, and that's see. some shit that yeah, can apply man. all that, that another shirt, to everything. Man. Yeah. And so because of that, Break like down, Junior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over there on Facebook, you yeah. need to be keeping up <laughs> with what your dad is talking about. Hey, I try to tell him. If you're an artist, you have to let, let the, the world, world know. know it. Yeah. And so and then I also believe like a, a lot of times, just like in every in a lot of things in life, you gotta let shit go so that you can get to the greater things, right? And so like with me. Like, with all of the art pieces that I've done over the years, like, I don't feel emotionally connected to anything, you know, like, but uh, I feel emotionally connected to my ideas and how I came up with that. But after I finish the piece, matter of fact, after I think of the piece, a lot of times I feel like I, I won already. But then I got to go through the steps, which is the working part of the artist. Got to go make that shit. Got to go paint that shit. Like, that's the work. But the idea is what I truly love. And so I think... You know, to me, like, I go through the process of, like, I got to get shit out of my sight so that I can have new ideas. You ever you seen can't... some of your shit and wanted it back? No. <laughs> like, no. Nick, I, no, I no, not, no, 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 but you I know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, never that, but it's things that, like, that I've done that I didn't care if it ever sold or not because I, I really was, you know, I was digging it like that. But other than that, like, I'm usually more excited to create the next new thing, you yeah. know? And so like when I'm working on things, I'm thinking of other shit that I could be working, like I'm learning from this experience to take to the next experience. And so if all you're doing is looking at them same experiences all, all the time, it's hard to get new ideas in. So when you get in your zone, what are you listening to? Bro? I listen to everything, man. I listen to... Well, tell me some of your new favorite niggas, the new rap niggas. Uh, some man, of the young niggas. Uh, what's the young probably niggas shit you be listening to? Earth Gang. Okay. Uh, shit, like from a rap standpoint, I mean, I like uh, Travis Scott, you know, is, is he is, is he considered a yeah. young, okay, I like him. I, I got I, the craziest Travis Scott story. Yeah, I got the we got to hear it. Yeah, the BT. I like, I like uh, Damani Harris a lot. He cold as fuck. Yeah, we got to he get dope. him on here. He Let me dope. tell you this Travis yeah. Scott story. So we had the BT award, everybody outside, like all the people who performing outside all the rappers and shit, so it's like, this right when his shit was super on fire. Right. He get ready to go on stage, right? So he coming like, I think he was on like a truck or some shit. He was walking <laughs> to the loading dock. Bro, this mug, he walked and like slipped and popped his fucking kneecap. Oh shit. On the way to the stage, and I'm like, oh shit, he supposed <laughs> to be first. He like tore his ACL or some shit right there running down like. So what did they do? Nigga, they fixed it. I mean, not his leg, <laughs> but they fixed the performance oh, okay. shit where got he it, had, it, I think it. he kind of just like laid on some shit or something. Okay. But I know he <laughs> left right after that. That's this, crazy. He fucked this shit up. Yeah, that's not good. I was yeah. like, it was like right in front of me too. So he walking and he missed the step or some shit or his leg gave out. And I was like, oh, somebody get this man. Damn. <laughs> I'm not qualified to handle that's funny. superstars. But shit. I think like young, like is, I mean, is J. Cole considered young? Yeah. He, okay, he, young. He, he I mean, so I mean, I love like him. Uh, I mean, obviously Kendrick Lamar, and right. I mean, I like motherfuckers who can like rap, rap. For real. Know? And so that's who I mean. I'm so you like, gotta, you gotta give some of them other guys a chance to some of them ones who are not necessarily great rappers. No, they no, that's some, that's a, he puts they me bring on some like great yeah, energy. Yeah, no, yeah. So my son, I mean, he's in charge of curating those playlists for me. But uh, he put me on like, what's the, what's the young guy out in California? Uh, Roddy Rich. Like he put me up on Roddy Rich. You like that singing shit? Yeah, I mean that's what I mean. He's singing yeah. that shit. Roddy Rich Cole. Up. Yeah, but you I mean. You gotta listen to Rod Wave. Okay. He's he's a big dude, bro. Okay. He's a big singing nigga. Rod Go Wave. On. Put that down, stick. He yeah. know Rod Wave. Yeah. Oh, he got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and then you want to hear some real aggressive shit, like NBA Young Boy. Okay. He yeah, that's the, that's his that's his guy bro. too. I don't yeah. know what he did to the right. to the next generation. Okay. But he is the Elvis of okay. his time. And I like and I like Lil Baby. I think yeah, Lil yeah. Baby, Lil yeah, Baby I think Lil Cole Baby's there. legit, you know. But some some of it I just can't. I'm like, damn, am I getting old? I mean I am old shit, I'll be fifty-three, but uh 
But yeah, some shit I just like I can't even. Uh, yeah, we be too hard on the young. It don't dudes, fucking bro. move me, huh? We be too hard. Nah, on the I'm young not hard on them. I, you know, they just like I'm saying our generation, like uh, it's hard the on one, them. the generation right. right in front of the guys who are right. hot right now. Right. They be like, right. man, they ain't got no lyrics, and then you listen <laughs> back to some of this shit we be listening to, I'm like that. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, I was, I was, uh, you know, the other day I was just listening to shit like the fat boys and like the skinny boys. Like they yeah. came out when I was like a junior in high school, like in 86, but they weren't really talking about shit either. It was just like, kind of like the party boy, raps, but bro, we loved it. Boys yeah. definitely wasn't talking about yeah. shit. Yeah, so I mean, but yeah, they, they cold. Yeah. They cold. And so, you know, everything, everything goes in cycles. I just know like the, the musically what always moves me is the storytelling, yeah. you know? And so like when I think about you know, like Andre 3000 on 16 ain't enough with Rick Ross. You know, yeah. I'm like, shit, is that like if that, if those bars are the standard, you know, and and like, you know, shit, T.I. like the Libra album. Like, right. I love that fucking album, you know, by Tip. I designed it, by the way, but you, you know. I know. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm into that. I'm into the stories. I want shit to take me places. The coldest it, young new storytelling nigga is. Well, he's no longer with us, but King Vaughn. Okay. That nigga gave you every detail. Okay. In the car, with the radio on, listening to some music, <laughs> heard a song, I didn't like this shit, you know just how I do it. I be like, nigga, he gave you every detail. That's funny, man. <laughs> yeah. I he mean, he love Nip. Way. I love Nip. You know, I guess he's a young guy, too. But I love I Love, love the way stuff. Nipsey rap. Yeah, Nipsey man. rap. Like you yeah. was with him earlier. And yeah. He just reminding you of yeah. all the shit y'all did. Yeah. You know, it's funny, man. Like the way that he raps, but I agree. The way that he raps, it reminds me. And this is way off to the left, but it's a book. I don't know if you've read it. It's called Relentless by Tim Grover. I will. But you I'll got it. Yo, you will. Relentless? Relentless by Tim Grover. You will finish that shit in two days. And, and Tim Grover, shit, he should be at, paying me for this advertising, but. You Tim Grover him? was Michael, no, nah, he was Michael Jordan's trainer when Mike was in the NBA. And okay. then he started working with Kobe and Dwayne Wade. But the book is written as if you sitting right next to them on the bench and he, they just talking through shit, it's dope. But it'll get you, if that shit don't get you going, nothing can, you know, yeah. it's a great book. You know? That's what's up, man. But it reminds me of Nip when you read it. I mean, it's, you know, because of the quality that you said, it's like you, you write with him. You know, yeah. it's the same thing. Cause sometimes Nip, he'll just throw a bar in there and it, it kind of sound like he is talking to you. <laughs> Them your pills, this is my weed. I was like, okay. <laughs> Talks with that, yeah. man. Bro, we got a collab on the project, man. Man, I would love to, man. I mean, I've been doing uh, a few collaborations with different musicians and uh, artists. No comedians though, bro. No, but let's fucking go. That's what I'm And you know, saying. and then I'm I'm the I'm the type like if we say we gonna do it, we gonna do it. We ain't gonna meet 15 times. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna be no. like, yo, you got that shit? All right, send it to me. That's what I'm saying. Right. It's like I'm a hundred. I'm a y'all hearing this right now? I'm a hundred percent in. So whatever Bruh, it is you wanna try. You know why it's gotta happen? Why? Cause your son is a fan of this show. <laughs> you think he not gonna let that shit happen? Right, right. <laughs> shit, you know. That's crazy. I got I got a. Uh, you know, I gotta have him as my project manager, then let him manage this process. Yeah. You know, he, he but, but yeah, but we could, I mean, whatever it is, like. Not, don't think you know. here. We got a whole nother setup that we going with. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We would definitely want to want to get some real dope shit in there. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all need up. a big dope box, actually. For real? Mm-hmm. Like I, like I make these dope boxes that are like a table. Although this like shit this is fly too. This Blue shit is fly. And all yeah. that. My partner made yeah. this. That shit is dope. He did but a great job. Tell me more about this dope box. What can I see it? Can Man, is there a site where people can hit you? Yeah, up actually, yeah. So if you go to D, yeah, dlwarfield.com, everything is on there. You know, my Instagram, my Twitter, everything is just dlwarfield.com. I'm on it. I'm about to get on it right now because. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 building me a man cave right now. Where at? At my house. Okay. And uh, that shit you said, I like that that box shit. Give me some more detail on it. Man, so I started doing the dope series like in 2014, and obviously, I mean, everybody knows what the word dope means in hip hop vernacular. So it was something that I've been saying since like 1981, well, really 1982, and. Uh, so I started making these pieces, and they and uh, 
The very first piece that I made was for a fundraiser for Chris Kelly's foundation. Okay. And so from he Chris had Cross. a, I mean, yeah, from Chris Cross. Yeah, yeah. you got to tell these folks. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm telling Chris you. Chris Cross. All right, who, yeah. Who's Chris Kelly? The right. Right. <laughs> no, Chris Cross. Yep, so I got hit up from a, a young woman named Angela Watts that was curating his, uh, an event, a fundraising event for his foundation. They asked me if I would put work in the show to help r raise money. I think it was for either cancer or leukemia. Right. I was like, yeah, but then I didn't have shit that was hip-hop related. So, you know, I started doing these pieces that just said dope, you know, and uh, they all saw it. And I was like, well, shit, like maybe I should keep exploring it. So. Uh, since then, I mean, I started, you went from making two dimensional pieces to actually building boxes that say dope all over that you can sit on. We have some that sit on the table. And then from that, in 2019, I did an event. Uh, it was at the Whiskey Blue, where I invited six of Atlanta's top photographers to come out and shoot people sitting on my dope box. Yeah. And so we, we created this whole series called Sitting on Dope. And so after they did the photos, the plan was to do a follow-up art show of me making artwork from the photos. But, you know, COVID hit. So I have all of these assets, you know, that eventually I will do a show called The Dope Show. You know, so I did collaborations with photographers. And then I did collaborations with artists like my guy uh, Fabian Williams, Hobo Inc., Paper Frank, Melissa Mitchell, Jeremy Brown, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and a bunch of others. So at some point we're going to do the show because everybody has to see all of this work. Right. and all of these collaborations together. And uh, the thing that I like about that Dope series the best, and even when I, when I first came up with the idea, I thought it could be a great mechanism to get artists to collaborate, right. you know? Because I mean, I don't know if it's like that, like this in comedy, but a lot of times I think artists really don't work together that much. Well, you know, you know comedy is such a solo sport. I right. Mean, unless it's a movie or like a sketch or something. Right. I don't really see too much collaboration happening. Okay, so, but as far as you writing your stand-up, is it just you or do you work with other people also? Well, it's, it works like this. It's just like, say everybody has a circle of friends. Right, trust. When you right. Do, you might show up to the club and do, do all this new shit that you wrote, mm -hmm. and your partner might give you the best tag. Right. So don't say that, just throw this in there. Right. Oh, you know what you should say? Or right. they, that's the way that got it. comedians got collab it. Got or it. Got when it. you see us outside ripping or joining on mm -hmm. somebody and it's like, that's how we keep the flex, the muscles yeah. flex, you yeah. know what I mean? And so, uh, like all of my best creative ideas that came from Joan, you know, yeah. like, I mean, uh, comedy, man, it, it has fueled so many uh, ideas the spontaneity of it, being able to think on your feet. And so even like with a lot of my artwork, just the wittiness of it, like when I explain that shit, people are like, oh shit, you know. Right. See, like when, when you I really, said that, yeah. it's like the wittiness of the comedy. To me as a performer, as a comedian, it's like, fuck the jokes that I wrote, right? Right. Like, all this, all the laughs that I get in between jokes that I wrote, right. that's the real kind of Yeah, because that's when, that's the motherfuckers like, oh shit, right. you know. The joke I wrote yeah. is supposed to work. Right. Right. No, I, I feel you on that. I mean, it's it's like watching a movie and you laughing at some shit that's off to the left. Yeah. Like, you know, the scene is here, but it's a motherfucker back here doing some crazy ass shit and you just see that and laugh. Just like you the know. black dude on RoboCop. I don't know if people remember that one scene on RoboCop where all the cops was rolling out and they was hitting the corner real hard. About 20 police cars and there was a black dude selling hot dogs and he just looked up. <laughs> he just looked up, he was like, they're going to kick somebody out. <laughs> Classic, most yeah, 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 because the shit is so ever. off to the left, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And that was his one life. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So I did a uh, in 2019. I did a show uh, at Wish Gallery. You know, a smaller spot, but the whole thing was really targeted towards, you know, Gen Z, the millennials, and it was called a million likes, and it yeah. was based on uh, America's, well, really the world's fascination of just like fame and celebrity and losing their soul. Yeah. And so I had a lot of those pieces in there that was speaking directly to, like giving you like those witty shit, like at first you don't get it, but then you're like, oh shit, like that's what he's talking about, you know? So that's fun, man. And like you have like your crew that you, you know, that you bounce things off and riff with. Artists work the same way. I mean, yeah. I have guys <clears throat> that I could be up at one o'clock in the morning, I call, yo Chris, what you think of, you know? So I, I See, I'm that guy. Yeah. I call everybody way too much. Yeah, I, but I that's good. Them. I mean, I uh, and you gotta, you gotta have those. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, uh, when I was in art school, 
Like I remember uh, at the time when my teacher was telling me about the value of having a like network. studio mates. Yeah. yeah, and at the time I wasn't really tripping off of that shit. But when you but when you get out and when you're working and it's just you with that one light on at two o'clock in the morning, you kind of wish you had people to bounce things off of. Yeah, you know? and people who know how to respectfully do it. Too. Right, you know what I mean. Right. It's like some people like to take over your ideas. <laughs> They're like, well, shit, you ain't do it. Bitch, I ain't finished with it yet. Let me finish. Right, please. right. Let me finish cooking. Yeah. yeah. You can always tell cooking. when they about to steal your shit, though. Yeah. <laughs> this is what comedians always say when they about to steal me. What? I got a joke like that. <laughs> bitch, no, you don't. No, you don't, bitch. You don't have no joke like that, bitch. How you got a joke about my surgery, bitch? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was fit to have a surgery too. You're a sure fucking liar. Yeah. You're a lying motherfucker, That's man. Funny, man. Man, drop that social one more time. Oh, so we can my, stay yeah, the, in the social. Uh, DL Warfield. So just you can find me everywhere. Just you putting that name up. You yeah. Know? Or you could use the hashtag uh, DL Warfield did this and all kind of shit come up because I can't even remember some of the shit that I did. Well, look, bro. I know this is your introduction to the trap, yeah. but definitely don't let this be your last time. You hey see man. the type of, we, we put our own No, you know what, I'm, hey, like this, uh, that t-shirt right there, the cream long sleeve shit, I yeah. mean, I like, that shit is cold. Yeah, Not saying that the other stuff ain't, but man, as soon as I seen that, I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's a great piece. That's exactly why we're doing great this, because that's not even our lane. We comedians, remember? We, right. we, we trying to figure this shit out. Hey, but you know what, I think, uh, it's beauty and not having all the fucking answers though. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I even, I mean, I've done a lot of things, but I know I don't have all the answers. And so I think to me that is it led, I mean, um, aided my longevity. Right. Because I'm always trying to figure shit out and I'm always curious versus me sitting, well, I fucking know everything and then you don't learn shit else. So I'm trying to figure that shit out too. Man. Well, there you have it, folks. Not yep, your, that absolutely. won't be your last time, but yep. we're going to be looking forward yeah. to getting a project in it. here in the future. Yep. 85 South Show, Black Excellence, my man, D.L. Warfield. Yeah. <laughs>